So, welcome back. In this module, we'll be talking about the hydration reactions. And this is clearly the fundamental aspect which is responsible for the behavior of cementitious materials. In this first module, I'm going to give you an overview of what hydration is, the different phases we have present, and um, how they contribute to this hydration process. In later uh, videos, we're going to look in more detail at these individual hydrate phases and then the mechanisms of hydration. So before we go on, we have a question of nomenclature. Now, cement chemists are a little bit lazy and because we're generally dealing with oxides, we have a shorthand to shorten the chemical formula. Now, you need to know this, but it is really quite simple. Basically, calcium oxide or lime, which is written CaO in full chemical notation, becomes simply C. Similarly, silicon dioxide or silica, which is SiO2 in the full notation, becomes S. Aluminium oxide or alumina, Al2O3, becomes A. Iron oxide becomes F. Sulfate becomes S bar or S dollar or dollar sign. And water becomes H. So to give some examples, you can see how the formula is shorted, uh, shortened. So if we talk about the main phase that is reacting in Portland cement, this is called tricalcium silicate or alite. And in the full chemical formula, this has to be written as Ca3SiO5, which is quite uh, long. But this can be simply shortened by the, chemical, uh, the ke cement chemist notation to C3S. And it's often also known by this uh, name C3S. If we look at another reactive mineral that we may find in calcium sulfur aluminate cements, this is called yellamite is the mineral name, and the full chemical formula is even more complex, Ca4, Al6, SO16, uh, and this can simply be shortened to C4A3S bar, and it's often known by that phrase C4A3S bar. Still a bit of a mouthful, but not as bad as this one over here. If we now go on to the hydrates, notably calcium silicate hydrate, which is making up the majority of cementitious microstructures, uh, we have a further complication that the stoichiometry of this phase is not fixed. It varies quite uh, widely, as we'll talk about subsequently. In the full chemical formula, I've represented that variability by the x's and y's, but on the right here, we see the way it's usually written by cement chemists that we um, use hyphens here to denote that the ratios between these different uh, elements are not fixed. And we normally call this phase CSH. So this is very important to remember this terminology. Uh, OK, so let's go back to these schematics. We saw these in the earlier lecture. Uh, to give a very basic idea of how cement works. And I really want to stress that it's all to do with volumes. So when we mix the grey powder with water, what we have is these grey cement grains floating about in the water. And then these cement grains are dissolving in the water. This is exaggerated in the next picture here, where you see the grains get smaller. So the Ions that are in the cement grains are passing into the water and then they're making new combinations and those combinations are precipitating as the hydrates which we've seen here in red. So now we see uh, the basic idea that these red hydrates are now joining the cement grains together and by joining the cement grains together you get a rigid solid which has strength uh, but you will still have some areas where there's no material, may contain water, may contain air, and these are known as pores. So it's very important to keep this basic idea of hydration as this change in solid volumes uh, in your head. We can look at it uh, another way, uh, it, 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 first of all, in a, in a real microstructure. So this is a picture of a real uh, cement grains. 
And what you can see in these cement grains is that they've got different levels of grey, which means they've got different chemical compositions. And typically in cement, we can identify four main phases. So we see this phase here, which is called a light or C3S. This is the majority phase. Generally, we'll make up between 40 and 70 percent of the uh, cement. Then we see some other grains like this one down here are more rounded. And this grain is made of what we call B light or C2S. So this is another calcium silicate phase, but has somewhat less calcium than the C3S. This also means it's less reactive. And then um, in addition to this A light and B light, we can see this darker phase, which is the illuminate phase uh, or C3A. And this very bright phase, it's very bright because this is the fa phase which contains the iron, which is called ferrite. And this is usually written as C4AF, although you should be aware that the ratio of aluminium to iron is not fixed at one to one. So these are the four phases that make up our Portland cement. So then what we see here is the different reactivity of these different phases. We can see that the compressive strength coming from C3S is by far the highest. And this is why generally we tend to try to maximize the amount of C3S uh, in, our in our Portland cement clinker. C2S is very, very much slower. And as we saw in the one of the earlier modules, this is why uh, really it doesn't make any sense to make cements with high content of B light from an environmental perspective. It may make sense from a point of view of having low heat cements. The illuminate phases and the iron phases, we need some calcium sulfate. This is why we add the gypsum during grinding, as has been mentioned before. These tend to react quite fast, but they don't give such high strength as the C3S. So now after hydration, those uh, gra clinker grains transform to give us the microstructure of the hardened cement paste. We can still see cement grains which haven't reacted. These are the uh, bright areas here. But now in between these grains, we can see the hydrates. And we can identify in particular uh, two different types of hydrates. We can identify these areas here, which are lighter gray than the rest of the hydrates, but still darker than the anhydrous. And these regions here are what calcium hydroxide. Calcium hydroxide has a very simple, simple formula of one uh, CaOH2. And uh, this is one of the main phases formed from the calcium silicates. And then... Uh, Apart from the calcium hydroxide, the rest of the hydrates have these kind of um, darker gray levels. We can still see that they're lighter than the pores, which we can see in black, such as here. And uh, these other hydrates, uh, we can say um, it's in majority CSH. Uh, around the cement grains, we can see these nice rims. We call these rims have formed in the place of the cement grain which has reacted, and this is called inner CSH. Whereas now between the grains, we have what we call outer hydrates, and this is a very fine mixture of CSH, of AFM, and of AFT phases, which we can't distinguish from each other at this level of resolution here. As I said before, it's really these volume changes that are critical. The ratio between cement and water are usually expressed by weight, but we're interested in the volume ratio. So typically, a water to cement ratio in weight terms would be said to be 0.5. And this means for each gram of cement present, we add 0.5 grams of water. But the development of properties is controlled by the filling of space, which is related to the volumes. So I think it's a nice little exercise if you can translate that water cement ratio by waste of 0.5 into volume. And I think you can switch off the video here. You can make this calculation for yourself. I'll 
tell you that the relative density of the cement is around 3. I hope you know that the relative density of water is 1. And then you should be able to make a nice simple calculation to calculate the relative volumes of cement and water just after mixing. So I hope you managed to work that out, that when we have a water to cement ratio of 0.5 by weight, this means that the relative volumes of cement and water at the beginning, we have about 40% cement and about 60% water. So you see, we actually have more water by volume than we have cement. And we need that amount of water by volume to give us the fluidity. You know, if any of you have made a cake, that you have uh, the grains of flour and you need to add a certain amount of liquid to make a flowable uh, cake mixture. And making a cement paste is really exactly like that. You have this grey powder, which is the cement. You have to add a certain amount of water to fill the spaces between those cement grains and give you this flowable cement paste. So we can go, nowadays, we can go to somewhat lower water cement ratios, particularly if we use uh, admixtures like super plasticizers. We'll come back to that uh, in another module. Um, but um, if we don't have any super plasticizers, then we would typically use this water cement ratio of 0.5. So that's the ratio between the solid and the liquid at the start. What then happens is we have this hydration reaction. And during this hydration reaction, we have roughly a doubling of the solid volume. So that this 40% here, this becomes now 80%. And the rest that doesn't get filled by these hydrates will still remain as pores. And this is then why these hydrates occupy a higher volume they can then bridge these cement grains together. They can give us this rigid, porous solid that has strength. So please, I really cannot emphasize enough just how important it is to think in terms of volumes. Now, if we look in a little bit more detail at the different phases, what comes from what, what we have here on the left is we have the approximate compositions of a typical Portland cement, 70% C3S or A-lite, 16% uh, C2S or B-lite, 8% C3A, and 7% ferrite phase. And then, uh, roughly speaking, the C3S reacts to give us this phase CSH and calcium hydroxide. We also get these two phases from the C2S, while the illuminate phase and the ferrite phase react to give us these phases we call ettringite or AFT and AFM phases. And in subsequent little videos, we're going to see what is the chemical composition, the crystal structure of all these different hydrate phases. But what's really important to see is that CSH is really the most important. In a typical cement paste, mature cement paste, this makes up nearly half of the solid material. Now, this kind of one-to-one uh, -one correspondence is what's usually uh, written down, but in fact, all of these hydrates are formed what's called through solution. So first of all, as we saw in the schematic, the cement phases dissolve, they form these different ions which go into the, into the solution phase. And uh, you see in the solution, we then get these ions of calcium, of silicate, of alumina, hydroxide, sulfate, etc. And then these ions combine in the different proportions to give us these hydrate phases, which then precipitate from the solution. Another way we can look at these hydrates is in this ternary diagram where we plot the different hydrates in this uh, triangle here of calcium oxide or in the hydrated form, calcium hydroxide or Portlandite, the ALOH3, alumina, hydrated alumina gel, and up here, a hydrated silica gel. And uh, again, here we can see that we have a very important phase of CSH. 
The SH, well, we have quite a wide range of chemical compositions we'll discuss in the next video. CSH we can also contain quite significant amounts of aluminium. And uh, then uh, down here we have the various aluminate hydrates. Now if we look at the composition of Portland cement, which is shown by this uh, blue area here, we can see that this composition of the Portland cement lies in this triangle bounded by CSH here, by Portlandite or calcium hydroxide here, and by the aluminate hydrate phases here. Here we come back to the kinetics of the reaction. We've already mentioned this in the context. This is a very important aspect of Portland cements because it really determines their technological use. So we, to look at the kinetics of reaction, we're generally measuring the amount of heat involved. And we see initially we get this very short burst of heat but then the heat evolution is quite low during a period of several hours. And this period of low heat evolution means that we have the time to mix our cement or our concrete and to transport it to the building site, put it in place to build our walls, uh, etc. And then after three hours or so, the uh, rate of reaction starts to increase rapidly and we get this uh, main uh, reaction which occurs during the first day. And in subsequent uh, videos, we're going to be looking at what are the mechanisms determining these different stages of the reaction. So to finish this video, and just to summarize, um, what we've seen here is that the hydration reaction involves the reaction of cement with water. And the critical aspect of this is the increase in solid volume, which bridges the space between grains, forming a rigid solid. So the calcium silicates, C3S and C2S, generally form calcium hydroxide and CSH, while the aluminate and ferrite phases lead to the formation of these phases we call AFT and AFM. So in the next few modules, we're going to look at the structure of these hydrates in detail and the mechanisms controlling kinetics. So we'll hope you'll come back to listen to those.